right here, and we are in my new classroom at CD2000, downtown Montreal. Uh, today, I just wanted to give you a few tips on uh, you know, what you can do if you run into some problems, troubleshooting for today, that's what's on the menu. Uh, also, I apologize for the noise, I don't know if you can hear, you know, bands practicing in the back, but that's going to be you know, the uh, ambiance, let's say, for my, uh, my lessons from now on, mostly because I don't want it to, you know, be in a place where my students are going to be comfortable screaming at the top of their lungs if necessary, and they know that they're not going to be bothering anybody. This, these jamming spaces are for rehearsing, practicing, or in my case, giving lessons. So uh, you're gonna hear a couple bands, and please, you know, don't pay attention to those. Um, I'm gonna be very quick, anyways, because I just want to give you a few tips on uh, what you can do if you run into some trouble. So first one is going to be about posture. You are your instrument. The way you position yourself when you sing is going to have a tremendous influence on the result. And I see a lot of people trying to do that kind of compression, you know, I, I talked about it in, um, in How to Start Screaming, I think, or one of the uh, warm-ups, where you need to push on the floor to give you that kind of push, that kind of support that you need for the compression and for note stability, basically. And I see a lot of people doing this, which is not so good. Let me explain to you why. When you do this, if you try to push on the floor, you can't do it. Mostly because either your, your legs are locked or um, your pelvis is locked. You're basically just doing this. If you unlock your knees, fold them just a little bit, and you sort of, not, not necessarily you know, push your, your butt backwards, but you just rotate the rest of your body like this, and you give, you give it a 90 degree angle, uh, you know, between you and the floor, that's going to give you stable push. That's going to help you achieve that very, that very powerful sound. If you're like this too, you're engaging and I mean, I'm having, you know, trouble speaking like this. If you're like this, you're already engaging your abs and you need those for compression, but they're already busy trying to just keep you vertical. <laughs> so you're giving them too much work for them to perform the way they should when you're singing. So if you're doing like this, it's not helping you. Just bend your knees, bring yourself back up a little bit, almost like you're about to sit on a chair, but you stop at like the first second. And that's where you need to be. You stand and you deliver. Uh, some people have a hard time with um, like the sound box, where the vocal cords sit, where the false cords sit, and those two are actually not very far from each other, they're about like maybe an inch. What you can do is always refer to how it feels. You are lucky, you are your instrument. So if there's something wrong, you can feel it. And as far as vocal cords, vocal cords and uh, false cords are concerned, the vocal cords are going to vibrate here, you can feel it, it's very, very low. False cords vibrate here. The, the, the proper term is vestibular folds, which means that they sit in the vestibule, it's at the entrance of your larynx, so right here. When you use them, you should feel it vibrate here, just right under your jawbone, right there. So if it pinches here, and you feel it, any type of discomfort here, you're using your vocal cords, you're not using your false cords. It needs to vibrate here on top. Even if you're doing some very low growls, so, you know, you're using all the bass that you can, this is, it has to do with placement. But your sound box, that very little zone here, where your two vocal folds sit, is where you need to pay attention if you have any type of discomfort, pinch, or if you're not getting all the grit that you want, you're probably just using your vocal cords. So false chords here. Little trick on how to engage those if you don't know how to. Uh, I, I gave you know a couple of tips on how to start screaming, but 
it is so unnatural to us to start using the false chords when we start because we've been conditioned by language for most of us, I mean, using French, English, most of the Latin languages at least, uh, German rooted languages also, but a little bit less, we're just trained to use only the vocal chords. So when we start having to use those again, it's kind of so alien, and it's normal that it feels like something you've never experienced before. You have when you were a kid, but then you spent, you know, the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years or so just using your vocal cords, so it's been a while. Give yourself a chance, be patient with yourself. So what you can do is that warm-up exercise that I gave you, the Chewbacca, the, the kind of gargling sound. This you can use as kind of a guideline to where you should be placed when you start screaming. That's where it is. So you can use it as a kind of a, a push to just surf on that gargling sound and then move on to engaging your vocal form, your vocal cords. The ones that you're supposed to do. The vestibular folds. Jesus. <laughs> the vestibular folds. I, false chords. Okay, let's just agree on false chords for this one because they're, the terminology for this thing is endless. Uh, last tip that I have to give you is um, the placement, actually. if Because a lot of people are trying to... I'm going for growls, I'm going for screams, but... Mostly it's the same technique, because you have like that kind of death sound and you have that kind of fry sound. So fry sound, you start by using that, that door hinge exercise. Whoa. You're not going for volume at first, it's normal. Volume comes later with uh, compression and support. For that kind of death sound, you really want to go with the barking, but in death you have growls and scream. It's the same technique, but it's not the same register. The way I teach it is, it's kind of like a triangle. If, if I had to describe it in, in an image, you have your growls that are at the base the triangle. It's very bassy, it's very wide, and it's very low. This is where your larynx should be. Very wide and very low. When you aim for screams, it's going to be very acute. You don't have much space, so it's going to be very tiny and very sharp. You want really that screechy sound, but it's the same technique, that same kind of death sound. So bassy and low and wide, very small, acute, and high. That's the difference between your growl and your scream. So if you don't know how to engage your false chords yet, we're going to use the vocal cords as a guideline. So when your larynx is low, it's going to sound kind of like a, a bear, cartoony bear kind of voice. I'm, I'm lowering it and then I'm talking a little bit like this, like a cartoony kind of bear. Hello, hello, la, 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 la. And when you want it to be in a scream placement, it's going to kind of sound like the most annoying cat you've ever seen in your life. It kind of sounds like this. Meow. 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 Don't you want to torture that cat yet? Meow. But it's where it's supposed to be. Very high. Very tiny. Very annoying. This is where you want to be for a scream. La 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 la. So if we use those two placements, I'm really going in the two extremes, but if we use these two placements on the false chords, it's going to sound like this. La 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 very annoying. Yeah! Yeah! that triangle and that's really going to help you achieve different kinds of, of pitches if you want. It's not necessarily a note, you can't just go like but it's going to help you achieve 
those two different si signature type of singing. So that's it. I hope this was helpful for you guys. And as far as the, because I'm still doing the, the t-shirt of the day, uh, today is going to be a double tap because I live in Canada and it's cold and it's snowy and it's cold. <laughs> so I have this uh, Valon Fire sweater that I got at their show last time they were in Montreal. Freaking love those guys. Love the hair. I mean, Singer has like the most perfect dreadlocks ever. After mine. <laughs> Anyways, love the band, and I can tell that this has been silk screened old school by hand because I used to make my band shirts like that. And I, I recognize the. It, it really was kind of a, a sweater full of memories and whatnot. But it's, I love this vintage -y kind of texture. I can tell that this was done. If not by hand, I mean someone who does it really old school, and I absolutely love it, worth every dollar. I love the band too, but I mean this is the type of merch that, that really gets me excited. I love this shit. <laughs> and uh, second tea is Hollow. Love my guys from Hollow. I mean, these guys combine uh, like a symphonic aspect, definitely black metal, but I can still hear that kind of crunchy, I love this kind of, of black and death type of vocals and it's just like this it's the perfect mix they have like this super original corpse paint i really encourage you to go see them or if you can't uh come here in montreal at least you know get there they have uh, a re fairly recent album out it's called war drake it's a freaking masterpiece it's ridiculous so i really wanted to you know showcase these two uh two of my favorite bands so you know, all the information is going to be below the video uh, of their Facebook websites and whatnot. But I really strongly encourage you to give them a listen. Definitely, definitely worth it. Uh, I'm also going to take a second because, you know, it's the holidays here and I totally miss Christmas, but um, we're still about to, uh, you know, get into that New Year thingy. So I wanted to wish everybody a good, happy, um, you know, brutal <laughs> new year and I hope that uh, metal is still going to be in your life. It's definitely in mine and don't we love it. So I'll see you guys in 2016 and thank you so much for watching. Bye!